Hare Krishna. In the previous video, we talked about two reasons for Shankaracharya propagating the Mayavad philosophy, and we also discussed the origins of Mayavad, why Adi Sankar came himself being a Vaishnava and established this principle of Mayavad. Just to recap, the two reasons were the first, to keep those who had very materialistic and demonic mindsets from entering into the Vaishnava faith where they would cause great disturbance. For this reason, the Supreme Lord instructed Shiva to turn those people against him so they would not come and disturb the bhaktas. The second reason was, as we heard, was to bring faith back into the Vedic teachings and the Vedic tradition where many of the Brahmins and others in the in Bharat or India had become Buddhists, followers of this voidist philosophy of Buddha. So to bring them back, Buddha had, as we heard, he had stopped all the slaughtering of animals and cruelty. He established ahimsa, nonviolence. There's a verse in the Bhagavatam that says that conditioned souls have the inclination towards sinful activities like sex life, alcohol, slaughtering and eating of animals. And so to curtail this and gradually lift people up to a higher knowledge, like for example, uh, there's, a, there's a statement that when you're doing the sacrifice of the animals, you whisper in the ear that now I'm killing you, in the next birth you will kill me. So there's a, if you do it under rules and regulations, gradually people will realize that these things are very uh, degraded. So we see in all different religions, there are different rules and regulations, but ultimately the best thing is to give this up entirely, and that's also established. So Vishnu himself came in one of his Das Avatar incarnations, in one of his prominent ten incarnations. He came as Buddha and stopped the slaughtering of animals. And we see in India afterwards you know, that this was this was stopped because they had taken advantage of it and were doing it completely out of control. So then Sankaracharya came by the Lord's direction and established Mayavad and brought people back into Sanatana Dharma. Buddha, he had preached an atheistic method, message taking the focus away from the Vedas. So Sankaracharya, accepting the order of Vishnu, he taught Mayavad by twisting the Vedic teachings, but he brought those who were influenced by Mayavad after some generations back into a faith in the Vedic tradition, but in a way that he used the Vedic verses. So we see that you cannot change people 180 all at once. You have to gradually help them understand the truth. And so Sankaracharya in his mission was successful. He brought back everyone into the path of Sanatana Dharma. In this way, we see he was acting under the Lord's desire. Therefore, we don't criticize Sankaracharya. So, Mayavad and Buddhism are very similar because Buddhism teaches Sunyavad, Voidism, and Mayavad teaches that everything is ultimately one. And there are many different examples showing their similarities. Uh, Buddha, for example, taught that everything is Shunya, non-existent. And Shankar thought that this world is false, Mitya. He said, Brahma Satya Jagat Mitya. That's one of his very famous uh, phrases and slogans. That the Brahman is truth and this world is false. In this way, he interpreted the Vedic teachings like that, but he twisted it. The Vedic teachings is not like that. The scriptures teach that Om is the sound form of the Lord, and from him all creation manifests. All the Vyahritis, or planetary systems, manifest manifest, and therefore because they're coming from the Lord, they're also truth. This is one of the first uh, refutations of Mayavad. How, if Brahman is Satya, then this world also has some truth behind it. It may be temporary, but it's true. Um, in the Buddhist texts, there are many similarities that we find between that and Mayavad. The concept of liberation, how you are freed from illusion and ignorance. This is very similar to teachings given in both Mayavad and Buddhism. They talk about the nature of the jiva, the different coverings of ignorance. Um, Mayavad and Buddhists, they both say that the Brahman has no attributes, no features, no personality. Therefore, we see uh, it's like Shankaracharya co-opted the Buddhist teaching and interpreted the Vedics in that kind of, uh, with that kind of commentary. 
Now, there are two kinds of mayavadis. The vivartavadis, who think that everything is a transformation of Brahman, or, no, that there is Brahman, and everything else is an illusion, vivartha. The vivartavadis, just to say again, there is the absolute truth, Brahman, and it has no transformation. Everything else that seems to be transformation is actually just an illusion. And they give this example of when you're walking in the dark at night, uh, you may see a rope and being afraid, you jump in fear thinking it was a snake, but that's just an illusion. Sankaracharya writes that a rope, or our Vaishnavas say, that you may see that a rope is a snake and be in fear, but if there was no such thing as a snake, how would you be afraid of the rope thinking it was a snake? So this analogy isn't actually uh, very powerful. Both snakes and ropes exist. Otherwise, why would you be afraid of a rope? If it was just a rope, if you'd never had no experience of a snake or no idea that there was such a thing as a snake, then why would you be afraid of the rope? It doesn't make any sense. You would never mistake a rope in the darkness for a snake unless a snake exists. So that refutes the Vivartavadi's conception. The other conception or the other group of Mayavadis believe in Brahma, Brahma Parinambad. The Vartavadis say everything is an illusion except for Brahman. All this world, our very individuality, ourselves, that is all illusion. This world is an illusion. It's all just completely, it's nothing. The other side is the Brahma Parinambadis that say that the absolute truth itself transforms into this world, but that is also ultimately false. So they say, what connection is there between Maya and this material nature and world to the absolute truth of Brahman? The Brahma Parinamvadis say that the absolute truth of Parabrahman transforms into this material world and the jivas, the living entities. But this goes against the Vedic teachings, which very, which very clearly establishes that that Parabrahman, absolute truth, cannot transform into Maya itself. Ekam Eva Dvitiyam 621 that says that the Mayavadis say that this means Ekam before the creation only the absolute truth that is non-dual existed Ekam the Brahmaparinam bodies quote this sloka verse of the Upanishads we see that Ekam Eva Dvitiyam what it really means is that Ekam, the Lord is the one absolute truth. Eva is certainly, and Dvitiya means the plurality of living entities. This is establishing that there is only one absolute truth. There is no competition between gods. This goes along with uh, debates between theists and polytheists. The absolute truth is one, or there are many gods. Ultimately, the Vedas establish that there is one absolute truth. There are many demigods. They are the expansions of from that Supreme Lord under his influence, they're under his control, Ishwara, Parama, Krishna. The demigods are other multitude of gods we see in Hinduism. They are like delegates of the Lord, officials in administrative posts, looking over the affairs of the universe. But the absolute truth is one. That is Ekam Eva Dvitiya. And Dvitiya means that there is a multitude of the Lord's manifestations, his incarnations, and his living entities. But the Lord himself is one. So, the Shakti Parinam philosophy is what the Vaishnavas follow. That means that this material creation and the living entities comes from the potency of the Lord. If it were directly from Brahman, then how would Brahman come under the influence of Maya? If he transformed and became the living entities, how would he come under the influence of Maya? But the Shakti, the potency of the Parabrahman, manifests as the multitude of living entities. And they can come under the influence of Maya. Otherwise, if Brahma transforms, it doesn't make sense. It's, saying that, it's like saying that the sun becomes covered by its own shadow. The sun is full of pure effulgence. How can the sun become covered by a shadow or its own shadow? So that's why the Vaishnavas teach Shakti Parinambad, the Lord's energy, Manifests as the material nature and manifests as the living entities. 
And this is uh, given in the teaching of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, para prakriti are the living entities. Prakriti means the Lord's energy, shakti. And uh, the material elements, earth, fire, water, air, and so forth, these are from the lower shakti energy of the Lord. Then those living entities can come under the influence of maya. If Brahman himself transformed and became a living entity, it would be like the example of the sun coming under its own shadow. Therefore, the Vaishnava understanding is Shakti Parinamvad. This was especially established by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Jeev Goswami, in his Sandarbhas, established the conception that there is the sun, the absolute truth, then his Shakti, the potency of that Supreme Lord, like the rays of the sun. And then there are the reflections of that illumination and there is darkness. Darkness is maya, ignorance, the illusory nature. And the jivas are like the reflections of that transcendental light. It's also described to be that the jivas are like the particles of that light, photons of that light. Therefore, they are described to be like very similar in quality to the Lord, but different in quantity. So there are so many things we're going to discuss. We don't want to cover too much in one video because it will be hard to uh, remember. So we'll continue forward in the next one. Haribo, stay tuned. Check out our next video tomorrow. Hare Krishna.